ready to come. Well, I'm ready. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight for HB Live number 57. We're here with one of my best friends, Ricardo Dennis. We're at the Aveda Institute in New York City. This is Stephanie. She's having a huge, tremendous makeover. Let's get started on the exciting part right now. Ricardo's got the hair and some ponytails. Take it away and tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Okay, so we're going to go for a change uh, here. Second hair. We're going to be donating the hair. So I've just tied it up into little ponytails. And I think this is always a hairdresser's favorite thing to do. So, Ricardo, I noticed you put it in more than one ponytail. Well, Can you tell us a little bit about why? It's just going to be easier to get them off yeah, instead of got, having the whole thing, you know, in one clump. She's got super thick hair, so it's easier. And you don't get, you know, sometimes you put it all in one ponytail, you get massive amounts of graduation. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, yeah. like we're seeing there. Yeah. This is obviously not the way that you want to be performing the haircut. Okay. So, um... We're going to be going for a, a longer bob shape, but um, well, there it is. It's done. Congratulations! It's done. <laughs> you got a new haircut. No, if you just joined us, Ricardo was just doing some pre-cutting. Hey, Stephanie, who you guys are going to say hi, Stephanie. Hi. Stephanie's been growing her hair out since she's about five. Pretty much. And now that she's 15, she's decided to donate it. So she's just donated probably. I don't even know how much is this. It's uh, probably 14 or 15 inches yep. of hair. Um, and she's donated, and we'll talk a little bit about, to, about the foundation she's donated it to. Um, it's called Children with Hair Loss, and it's an amazing foundation. I'm just learning about them, but we'll mention them a little bit more. Let's get into Ricardo's haircut now that he's done the pre-cut. Okay, so I'm just going through and I'm sectioning off literally just at the parietal ridge on both sides of the head. And um, I'm basically going to be saving that area till the very end where I wanted to just work through a looser type of layer that will sit on top of the shape. So uh, instead of just doing this one length, we're actually going to start right through the bottom part of the nape. We're starting with diagonal sections and we're going to go in and we're going to just start off with our outline and we're going to work that on both sides of the head and then we'll start by elevating the hair and creating some graduation. So lots of our friends joining in. Austin Call is here, says looking good, Ricardo. What's Thank up, Austin? You. Hope Harris, Kate Daffin. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of Aveda people here supporting you. Uh, and uh, we've got a great group of people here in the audience too. Say hi, students. Hi. hi. Nice yeah, they're all quietly watching Ricardo. Okay. All right, so let's get back to Ricardo working this outline. I'm just gonna ask everyone that's watching, if you're enjoying this education, hit the share button so more people can see it. So, um, yeah, this is, this is, I think, less typical, you know, of doing like your typical pivotal graduation where I think a lot of people will work off the occipital bone, where this is really about working off the outline. And I love doing this because I think it's uh, a little bit more contemporary in its look. It's also much more, I think, client friendly if you're getting someone who's asking to change their hair. How did you know um, how to take the correct length? Is it something you discussed in the consultation or? Absolutely. So when we were looking at actually Stephanie's face, you know, there's, there's like, you know, the typical things that you talk about, you know, in terms of how long or short or round someone's face is. But, you know, when you're looking at longer lines like this or shapes that tend to be more triangular, you know, it's really about elongating someone's face and emphasizing, you know, I think the, um, you know, just looking at where the back. Yeah, where it's going to sit and looking at the profile. And I think this is just going to be a much nicer line for Stephanie's face as well as her body type. Okay, so just to recap for those who are joining us, because we're really getting a lot of viewers now, thank you all for hitting the share button. Stephanie cut off all this hair, which is going to be donated to um, Children with Hair Loss, which is a great organization. And then Ricardo started in, put in a baseline, and then you're starting to gradually elevate yes. off of it. Yes. So it's, you're not doing a graduated bob. This is something totally different. Can you talk about that a well, little bit? Well, it used to, you know, we used to have arguments on whether it was a graduated bob or a bob with graduation. That's and this okay. is, yeah, we'll fight to the death yeah, over that one. And this is definitely more a bob with graduation. And what's nice about this is it just takes the ends and makes it look a little bit more beveled. How do you know how much to um, elevate? That is a, a question I think I've been asking um, my whole life. And I always think that, you know, graduation is definitely um, 
an experience-based technique. And what I mean by that is you literally need to do it in order to understand. There's a whole series of degrees that you can actually be lifting the hair. Anything between 1 and 89 degrees will give you graduation, but that n might not necessarily be the right angle. And so it's really about reading the hair, looking to see if you're building the right type of weight, if you're getting the bevel that you're looking for. And Are I think, you? Yeah, like you're yeah I, totally, I totally do. Well, I yeah, think because sometimes you're yeah, not. Sometimes absolutely. it's too heavy absolutely. or too, too flat. Absolutely. I think you know, the, the thing you have to watch with her hair is you know, you've got super straight hair, and the density of it is not necessarily thick. So what, ten, what can tend to happen is if you end up lifting too high, or making the hair almost feel like it's closer to a layer, what will start to happen is the bottom will start to collapse. So it's look fragile, exactly. you get like a bell shape, exactly. and then it's flipping, and then before you know it, you're chasing the length exactly. of the back of the head. It's happened to me once or exactly. twice. <laughs> so we have a lot of our good friends tuning in. Tristan Morrison, what's up? What's up, Tristan? Tristan, our, our old friend, over 25 years of working together, training together. Um, Tim Bricker, a friend of mine. Uh, Reno Prezio, great friend of ours from San Diego, hey, Jeremy yeah. Hickson, Steve Kim, everybody's out there sharing the love. Thank you so much, guys. If you've got questions for Ricardo, this is a great time to do it. Uh, and let's get back into this beautiful graduation that's happening here. Yeah. So, you know, I think the, the really important thing is, you know, people understand, I think most people understand more or less how they should be lifting. I think the, the really tricky thing is as you move in towards the front. And, you know, the minute you start to move in towards the sides, you have to understand that the hairline is receding. So it's not exactly as what's happening through the back. So it's important about graduation is you have to sort of think about that as you reach almost like a stationary point with your over direction as well as with your elevation, it's not really stationary. What's happening is that line is starting to extend out. So in the very beginning, in your first sections, you notice that your elevation tends to be very close and down almost against the skin and then slowly what starts to happen is you're moving out and away from the front part. And what that does is it really helps for the graduation get actually carried in towards the sides, which sometimes doesn't happen. So Amazing. It's an important part. It's building quickly. We've got so many questions coming in so quickly, but there was a great one from Cade. Uh, Cade Daffin, who I know is a member of the Aveda Network, and he was asking, um, why horizontal versus vertical? How do you choose to graduate horizontally or vertically? It's such an important question. Well, I think it, it's, it's also about the relationship between the two. And I think that's really where diagonal sections come into play. You know, vertical sections really act as a ladder for a haircut. It allows you to immediately climb upwards and downwards on the head much quicker than a horizontal section. Horizontal sections kind of act like a series of steps or stairs. They slowly allow you to work up the head. And so the result of each are actually quite different, one being much flatter and the other being much rounder. And I think it's really about understanding, you know, how do I use a diagonal to kind of bridge you know, the gaps between the two characteristics of both the vertical and the horizontal. So with something like this, you know, you're starting off with a slightly heavier looking diagonal that tends to be more on a horizontal, and that's because you're working through a very crucial part of the haircut, which is the outline. And lots, of, uh, lots of love coming in. I wanted to thank Veronica Valdez, she shared. You know, if you hit that share button there, all your friends will know about this, they'll get a chance to watch. Super important part to making this successful so everyone can learn from Ricardo. So let's get back into the graduation. Yeah, so. Can we, I'm sorry, can we just talk real quick about the sections you're taking? Just take a few moments to explain. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's, it's working from, it's, it's constantly on a diagonal, but what's happening is the section slowly moves. As the head starts to protrude, start to become much more rounder. I want to start to remove weight and give the shape a softer feel. So instead of keeping it quite heavy as you work up, the sections almost start to become, not a, necessarily vertical, but quite a steep diagonal. And that just allows me to lift the hair a little bit higher. It also allows me just to carry a really nice line in towards the sides there. Okay, got another great, super important question that we haven't discussed yet coming in from Thanks Jane, for the Jason Katuba. Yeah, lots of questions. They're coming in so fast, I'm trying to remember who asked them. Jason Katuba was asking about body position. So it's such an important part of technical precision haircutting. Give us your take on what the right body position for this shape is. Well, at Aveda, in our curriculum, we actually teach mm -hmm. a very specific body positions. Um, I mean, they're, they're, they're quite elaborate, I think, in, in the sense of uh, explaining them, but I think you have to understand 
that you know your center for a hairdresser isn't necessarily squared off. You'll generally find that when you're watching hairdressers, they'll position themselves where they tend to almost slender the body. And this just makes it much easier to cut hair because I've always believed that, you know, cutting hair is a, is a little bit like target practice. You kind of, you know, you find your point and then you're generally trying to shoot for balance on both sides. So understanding how you can position your body on both sides, what we, we do is we have this, this move called the crossover one and two. And what it is, is it's basically positioning one foot at the center part of the head. And this foot here that travels from both the left and the right side helps for you to understand where you're to be traveling to. It also puts you in a position to be receiving the hair and correctly position your hands and elbows in order to achieve the proper technique. I feel like you've said that once or twice yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, that sounds. Uh, you know, we have a, a question coming in that I think was super, super important. I want to find the name. Um, it was Britt White. Britt White is someone who's going to start going to school in five months. So she hasn't even started yet, or he. I'm assuming it's a she, but you can't tell. Britt could go either way, right? <laughs> Sorry, Britt. I'm sure you'll let us know. Um, <laughs> but nervous to do her or his first haircut. Any advice you'd give to someone? We've got a room full of students here, so I'm sure that they can relate. But do you, you know? Do you even remember your first haircut? I do actually. I don't. I, I totally I remember. My remember. First it was actually pretty good, from what I remember. <laughs> But the next ones were terrible. Yeah, that is the truth. Yeah, you got luck. That's how you call beginner's luck. Right? Beginner's luck, and I think it, it, it actually allowed me to believe that there was some place for me in this industry. Right. Um, I think that the first thing, you know, everyone is constantly um, sharing really lady. great info, and I was recently in the class, and I had explained to the students how to accept failure, and. As negative as that sounds, I say that with the most love because I think for any beginning hairdresser, it's the idea and understanding that you will fail, you will mess yeah, it so up. So let the ego go. Let it go. Learn from your mistakes. Exactly, and yeah. learn and learn from that, and use it as an opportunity to you know yeah. to get better. You know, for me, with that question, the practical advice. I think it's great to hear great philosophical advice. Practical advice, I would say, first start with um, friends and family. And maybe kids, you know, because sometimes people have a kid who's like, you know, six years old totally. that whatever, you can just totally. cut it shorter. But just to get over that, I can remember, my, I, I do remember one of my very first haircuts, I actually broke out in hives. Yeah, <laughs> it, I was so nervous, you know, uh, because it was like a paying client. It, even in school, they were paying. So sometimes it's nice if it's for free and it's a family member. And, you know, if it's a kid, you don't want to do a toddler, but maybe like a six-year-old or something that they can just put some gel in it and make it stick up and nobody's going to worry about and, it. And guys are super <laughs> forgiving. Yeah. And All right. Cut a guy's ear off. Oh, hey, recorder, so just to um, catch up or clarify, that was just some cross-checking. That was exactly some cross-checking. Yeah, can you explain the cross-checking? Because, you know, obviously with graduation, cross-checking can make or break it. I just want to say right now we've got 840 people around the world watching live, which I think is a record Pop for a live in. broadcast. Uh -oh. For us. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start getting nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I, are you getting numbers. hives now? <laughs> I'm breaking but out. You know what? The funny thing is we're part of they're all our friends. Everybody oh, on here are people that we've worked with for years, well, I, I, and they're all given lots of love. I think so. that's amazing, and uh, it just shows you know what a great network and community uh, you know, Hairbrain has. So and a great network that Aveda has, because totally. most of the names that I'm seeing are people totally. that we worked with over the years at Aveda. We're, well, let's we're get back to cross-checking. Let's get technical. Okay, so um, I spent years when I didn't understand shape not cross-checking. So I think to really cross-check well, you have to understand sort of the occupation of your haircut and the space it occupies. So if I'm working from the back and moving forward, I've got to imagine that not only do I have a haircut running up this way, but I've got a haircut running up this way as well. So seeing it from a bird's eye view, I kind of understand that there's this triangular shape that works all the way from the back towards the front. And what I'm looking at doing is making sure that as I take my sections working back the opposite way, that I'm actually pulling them out in a way that's going to reveal the shape of the haircut as well as any minor inconsistencies. Now, I'm gonna be honest, if I see something like that, I'll actually just go back in, you know, because really that's what that technique is there for and look for those extra guys to go in and cut out. So Ricardo, you must be doing a really good job because we just hit 1,100 live <laughs> viewers. So we're pushing that. Thank you guys for supporting us. 
Thank you to Aveda. People were asking where, where we're doing this. We're at the Aveda Institute in New York, and you, most of you guys know Ricardo as uh, Aveda's Global Artistic Director for Haircutting. Um, and you know we've been wanting to do this for a while. Ricardo was recently on stage with us at, at, at Teach-In here in New York, which was amazing. And he's been a great friend of mine now for close to 25 years, and it's a pleasure to have him. So recap the haircut, because so many people are just joining. But there was a question joining. real quick about um, over-directing each section, or is it a traveling guideline? It's absolutely a traveling guideline, but there's a point where you're looking at for where you want the graduation to stop, and it lives right about there. And I always considered like graduation is like, um, it's like working with clay. I think you kind of have to understand how sensitive the hair is to any sudden movement or adjustment in your elevation or your over direction. And you know, when you're, when you're graduating hair, you really do have like an area, a buffer area to which you're working in. And everything is really focused on studying? that panel. I'm doing good. I'm excited to see it. <laughs> Great. So for everyone that's just joining us, because I know hundreds of you are just joining us, Stephanie's having a huge makeover. And the great part about it is she decided to do this to donate her hair. You can see her underneath there somewhere. Say hi, hi Stephanie. Hi. As we said, she's been growing this hair for a very long time. It was about down to her waist. And she wanted to make a donation to uh, children with hair loss, which is a really great organization that for free creates wigs um, and hair replacement for children under 21 who have hair loss. So she got in touch with Ricardo, we set this up, so that's a great part of it. And it's, you know, it's a big part of kind of the Aveda mission um, is to do good while creating beauty. Uh, beauty heals, and it's a big month for Aveda, isn't it? It's Earth it? Month. It's Earth Month, yeah. So for those of you, I know a lot of, a lot of people watching are from the Aveda Network and they know about Earth Month. For, for people that maybe don't know what Earth Month is about, Ricardo, can you say a few words about that and then get to the haircut? Well, it's all about giving back. It's all about bringing awareness to whatever global um, you know, reason, anything that's happening in the world. For us, it's water. And you know, at Aveda, we just definitely try to do our part and try to bring awareness to everything that we do. And we have our Light the Way candle. We also have a bunch of other promotions that we're going to talk about in just one minute. Right on. Cut in. Let's get back to the haircut. So here we've got, uh, this is like one of my favorite techniques. Can you go ahead uh, and pull that from the beginning? Sure. So we've taken the top down and we're basically taking diagonal sections from one side of the head over to the other. Um, this actually comes from uh, one of my mentors, which is Tim Hartley. Uh, so I can't take credit for this, but I use this all the time. I feel like some it's one, of those, cutting, right? one of those things that I just love to do. So what we're doing is we're taking our guide from below the parietal ridge and we're using our graduated shortest little length there as a guide. And what we're doing is we're using the tips of the scissor to help to remove weight, but slowly end up keeping length through the very top area. Now this isn't what bias cutting actually is. Bias cutting is refers to the type of sections that you're taking, which I think is really important. It's a diagonal across that's the grain right, of the hair. That's right. So as I complete one side, what I'll do is repeat the same process on the opposite side. So it leaves kind of an elongated peak yes. through the top. It, it takes the weight out of the graduation, yeah, absolutely. pushes it up. It just kind of adds an element to like a bob that kind of makes you wonder, you know, how was that cut? Or Without how layering that? it, Without because layering it still it. keeps a graduated exactly. look. So again, for those of you who just joined us, Ricardo started with a baseline and then did pretty traditional elevation using kind of classic bob sectioning and elevating to get the perimeter in. Now above the round of the head, he's using the bias cutting technique taking sections diagonally across the head, elevating quite high, almost yeah. stretching, and then letting the hair slide through the fingers to elongate that graduation. So your hand is traveling. Absolutely. Yeah. You slightly let it slide through yeah. the fingers. And if you were to flip her head upside down, it'll be kind of like a big it's teardrop shape. Right. Yeah, a big point. And it's a really time. beautiful, seamless way. It makes graduation modern because you won't get a weight line. Yeah. yeah. Also went through a time where I didn't even know what else to do to the top of the head anymore. Just kind of was like well, square layer, bias, it, bias, bias, bias cutting, cutting yeah. layer it. And, and the big thing is here is to really. We can ask uh, Aaron Johnson. He knows what to do. To the top. <laughs> cut it, cut it super short and layer. But uh, uh, what, what really important here, before I lose my, head, um, is is to really focus on the tips of the scissor, and that's really what's going to focus on getting you that detail and that kind of nibbled, I guess, feeling in the hair. 
We've got a, another good friend watching, Travis Smith. Did you ever work with Travis? No, but we've, yeah. we've become friends yeah, on Instagram. Travis is a great guy. Travis is, a, is an work. educator out there as well. He's still uh, in the Sassoon world where both Ricardo and I started. Yep. Um, today we're in the Aveda Institute, which is Ricardo's home here in New York City. Yep. And it has been probably six years. Six years, yeah. And uh, we're surrounded by students. You can probably see them in the back. They spent their evening here tonight. And they're also part of, to be part of this, they made a small donation to, to Earthmark. So they got to make a small donation. Way to go, guys. Yeah. And then one of them is going to win a haircut with Ricardo. So uh, who's going to be the lucky winner? We'll see. We'll see. Excellent. Depends what I do. Maybe you'll be unlucky. <laughs> now, if there's anybody out there that wants to support Earth Month, uh, it's an initiative that Aveda has. They, they focus on clean water, and they've been doing that for a while. I believe the number is $44 million they've raised over the years um, for Earth Month. It might even be more than that. Don't quote me on that. But I know it's a lot. Um, and one of the ways that they support that is through the Aveda Network. They sell what's called the Light the Way Candle. Um, it's $12, and um, the full price of that goes to, to the charity that supports clean water, which is incredible. All right, let's get back into the so, bias cutting. So here we're doing our second side, and we're literally just taking sections, working the opposite way. You can see I've, I've changed my body position. I'm now standing in front, and this is just going to make it <laughs> possible for me to cut this side. And also really important is changing the way and the direction that you're actually combing the hair. You know, because that's the, the, the big factor in over-direction that I think sometimes people forget. You know, a guide can be manipulated to go anywhere you want. It's really about making sure that you're pulling and dragging or over well, And the guide can be changed. I mean, yes. part of creative haircutting, after you learn how to follow a guide, yes. is how to manipulate a guide and start with one angle and actually consistently change that angle, which I think is pretty incredible. Okay, we've hit a major, major milestone, Ricardo. It's because you're so <laughs> handsome. You know, I really take down my hair down. We've got over 2,100 2, live viewers around the world, which Whoa. is for us a huge, huge milestone. Thank right. you guys for sharing. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Please hit the share button if you're watching so all your friends can get this great lesson from Ricardo. So you do seem to be taking the sections back to the previous? Absolutely, absolutely. You want to be pulling these sections back. I wouldn't even say to the previous. Do you go back to one? I would say it's more of a stationary guy that lives okay. literally behind the ear there. Um, you know, when you don't over direct the technique like this, considering that the shape through the underneath actually works from a shorter shape in the back to a longer shape in the front. And it's important that when, I think when you're working with techniques like this, that they line up with the existing haircut that you have. So we've got a, a great question coming in from Diana Oliveira. She's asking about the, the wetness of the hair. She said it looks soaking wet. It's not. No. It might look soaking wet on the camera, but it was just shampooed probably about 40 minutes ago, yeah. and it's just been allowed to dry off naturally. Yeah. Do you do that a lot, work from just wet to dry as you get Yeah, I think, I think it's really dependent on the texture. You know, if, you know, if something's really frustrating you because of the texture, because there's a kink, or wait, wet it down and get rid of it. Um, I don't think that the water should contribute uh, such a major part to not understanding what the texture of the hair is. Right. So if it's disguising it. Yeah. If it's so it. wet, you can't understand. You know what's actually happening. So we're, what we're going to do right now is because that was such a loose technique. I'm just going to go through it just a little bit more technical. I'll just work kind of refining. Yeah. Just refining. Is your whole basic shape kind of in? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. So yeah. it was, can you just recap it? So many yeah. people have just joined us. So again, a lot of hair was cut off. Yeah, because it was one length all the way down her back. Stephanie decided she wanted to donate her hair to um, children with hair loss, which is a great foundation. Ricardo did that. And then tell us, uh, walk us back through so, the hair. So we started literally right through the nape with two diagonal sections. And I wouldn't even say that it was as, as wide as it would be for a traditional one length. You want to be working I guess closer or, or more in the internal part of the hairline before you start to work you know, through the exterior part. And then slowly as the sections start to work up, you're actually using the outline as the guideline and you're actually building graduation off of that. And what I was saying, the reason why I was using that is because you know, with, with this type of hair, um, it being so straight, it's beautiful hair, but it's very straight and it's very heavy. What tends to happen when you just cut it uh, completely one length is it doesn't have a lot of movement. The top tends to sit very flat. It ends up with too much width through the sides and the ends almost can look like a bit of a broom. 
So I think this is just a nicer shape because as you can see it, it really does bevel that line quite nicely. Beautiful. So Ricardo, lots of love coming in from all kinds of people that we know for years. Um, and there's a great question that was in the stream, not a technical question, but I think one we should address from Gareth Hornby. It's kind of a two-part question. So he asks, um, do you recommend people specialize in cut or color? And then also ask, what's the best advice you've ever been given? Tough questions. Yeah. But I can, you know, I can start off with an answer because I what, I, what are you? Oh, big surprise. Well, go for it. well the Thanks. best advice I've, I've ever been given, that. the best advice I've ever been given is do what you love. So if you're trying to decide between cut and color, chances are if you really are self-aware, there's one of them that you prefer more than the other. And if you really do, then that's the one you should focus on. Um, the reality of the financial world is depending on what city you're in and where you live, you might need to do both to make as much money as possible. If you're in a city where you can charge over $100 for a haircut, then you can focus on specializing in haircutting and make great money. Um, but if you're not, pretty much every city uh, in the you know in the U.S. at least, people charge way over hundred dollars for basic color techniques. Would you agree, Ricardo? Yeah. But some places, for some reason, it's a little harder to charge for haircuts. So yeah. it could be a financial decision. But ultimately, if you do what you love, you'll be the most successful you can be. Yeah. Hey, Ricardo, now, what's your spin on that? But just real quick, um, how did you know what sections to take as you pulled it back? When you just got the sections that you just got to finish cutting. Yeah. So, um, how do, how do well, you one, know? one, I've done the haircut before, but the vertical section right now, because I don't necessarily want to go back in and build more weight, this is just going to allow me to connect it much quicker than going back through diagonally or horizontally. So the vertical section, just because, you know, if I think about where my disconnected panel was, so I've got this section that comes into a point in the back, right? And so where, where that point is, as I created that triangle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have excess weight and length that's going to sit right there. So what I've just done is just gone through with a vertical section, and, and I want, yeah, and I want, I don't want, you know, I, I want to make sure I don't have any overhang on what's happening here. Got it. Okay. And then we're just going to quickly. Hey, girl. Hi. <laughs> yeah, she, got, she does have a face there, and I haven't been yeah. kind to her, so I, I got to let her breathe here. So we had another great question coming in from Jason, um, just asking about tension. You know, what, what, um, how did you vary your tension on the shape and anything that you have that you can share about tension while cutting? Well, you know, I, I, I think tension is um, a huge factor in, you know, the characteristic of your cutting line. And what I mean by that, it's almost like the penmanship in your work. Um, but, you know, there's only really one time when I don't apply a lot of tension and that's more when I'm doing, you know, a traditional classic one length. But I would say that, you know, it's very important to be strengthening, you know, your tension in your fingers and your dexterity. I think a really good tip for young hairdressers as they start is to create a fist. You know, it's very often when you watch, uh, you know, a brand new hairdresser when we first start off, our palm is so open when we cut hair. And, you know, we tend to have this lack of control, our hand shape, we cut ourselves in the weirdest places. Um, but I think the main thing is to really create a fist because that's how you're going to match. So literally when you're holding the hair. You're trying to literally yeah. close off that hand. You know. And that just strengthens. And if you think right. about hair. As opposed to holding yeah. with your fingers out. Right. Open. Close these fingers in. You'll yeah. get 10, 20% yeah. more tension yeah. right away. So that's, I think that's a, that's a big thing. And, you know, not to look at it like, am I applying too much tension? You know, besides doing one length, you know, I mean, you do have to watch for, you know, too much tension and the scalp being pulled, but you know, I, 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 I would, I would go for the tension. Yeah, Kelly Cross Rivers, you're exactly right. Not heavy layering. This is kind of a sublime shape. Yeah, it was about building graduation out to a point, and that point was kind of where the head starts to round away. Yeah. Then elevating and using bias cutting, so the layers are very invisible. And it's got a weight list. It, it, when you blow dry, it'll look like the perfect one length. Yeah. It'll bevel. It won't be too thick anywhere. So you've got it just right, Kelly. Okay. So, Ricardo, can you tell us a little bit about your scissors? We've had quite a few people ask about what type of scissor you're using, okay, so um, lengthwise, and any, any recommendations you have for scissors. Well, these are my Hikaris, and these are like my babies. So, you know, when I want to do like the most beautiful work, pull these things out, yeah. what I feel. <laughs> Uh, more secure and calm. Keep them in a velvet. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But you know, I don't. I don't work with you know, ten thousand dollar pair of shears or anything like that. I think you should have really good equipment. 
you know, I don't think they should be diamonds or bedazzled or anything like that. So, you know, we're, you don't bedazzle your scissors. I don't bedazzle my scissors. I don't want anything. Feel, Stephanie? It feels so much yeah. lighter. I'm really happy. Amazing, amazing. Again, anyone that's just joining us, a huge makeover. I've got a little bit of the evidence right here. You can see. Huge makeover. It was all the way down Stephanie's back. This hair is being donated to uh, children with hair loss, which is a great foundation you guys should check out with. Check out Aveda's working with them and organized the donation here of that hair. So we're, we're not finished, but uh, I feel like, you know, we've got some really nice balance happening through the front, which is great. <laughs> when that happens with the bob. Um, but what I want to do right now is I want to blow dry it and I know there's going to be tons of little bits that I'm going to want to go in and cut and I want to do that in much more of a finishing and drying stage. So right now I'm using some of our Aveda Smooth Infusion style prep which is going to just add a little bit of moisture to her hair before I start to blow dry it. And the type of blow dry that I want to do is really just a wrap dry. It's going to be super easy. Stephanie does not blow dry her hair. So during her consultation, <laughs> she was looking for something super easy, something very wash and wear. So I don't want to kill it with a, you know, an over elaborate blow dry. It would really just be about getting some movement in her hair, getting the moisture out, and then allowing me to see the shape. So we've got lots of people who've been asking questions about taking classes with you. So if someone out there wanted to take a class with the Ricardo Dennis, how, how would they do that? Well, they would go to uh, Aveda Advanced Academy. There's a whole list of yeah. our classes. So AvedaAdvancedAcademy.com. It's got right. their own website for right. all the classes. And you might, does someone have to be from an Aveda salon to take a class? No, actually. No, yeah. they don't. Yeah. So anyone would be able to class. Yeah, so we got a little blow dry going on here. Um, we're going to talk through that a bit as loud as we can and take as many questions as we can. So this is a wrap drawing technique that you're working yeah. with. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about it? So a lot of people start off in the back, but what I actually like to do is, is start in the front. You know, if you think about a wrap dry and kind of what women, I, I think, used to do in Spain in order to straighten their hair. And I used to actually work out in Madrid and uh, I learned how to properly do, you know, what was considered like a wig wrap. And it taught me a lot about blow drying because essentially what you're really doing is using the head as the molding surface. And you want to make sure that the area that you're going to be blow drying onto is already set up for success. And it, it just actually takes a lot of the work out because slowly what happens is that hair will just immediately bevel, so it's actually quite easy. Now Stephanie does have extremely straight hair, so uh, using the surface of the head as well as finishing through the ends is just gonna really help out. And just add more to the cut because, you know, essentially what I'm trying to do with the blow dry is accentuate what I've been doing with the haircut. So lots of questions about what type of brush that is. I think that's the best brush. Yep. Yeah, you, you'll notice on a lot of the HP Lives, yeah. the haircutters use best brushes. Yeah. Is it really, can you tell us a little bit about why you chose the best it's brush? It's a best because, you know, you know, for a haircutter, you're just trying to move away from any distortion in the shape. Right. And I, you can check my mic hit there. I've got a round brush. I've got a mason paint. Mason Here's the brush. evidence. He's got so, a round brush. You know, I actually can round brush, and I can do it quite well. I want to see that. I can. I can, yeah, do, I can really put a blow dryer in there. Um, but you know, for something like this, you know, the round brush, I might even sometimes just use to get my initial shape in. But you know, with Stephanie's hair here, look, it's it's actually going to do it all on its own, and this is just really easy to grab sections through, knock in a very clean blow dry. So, so again, lots of people ask me about classes. You can go to Aveda, advancedacademy.com to find out classes with Ricardo. They're all over the place, so it's not just yeah. in New York. And now you've got a very special class coming up, Wendy was just mentioning. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about yes, that class? Thanks, thanks for the, the, yeah. um, the spot. Hey, and Wendy, can... we're a good team. We're, we have a lot of experience. <laughs> thanks, Wendy. So we do a really uh, great class, and um, I was always going to uh, you know, classrooms and ask expectations of what students really wanted, and inspiration constantly came up you know when i talk to a lot of hairdressers that have been in the business for a while it's really about getting re-engaged and re-inspired like you were when you first started and um my wife's an artist and i'm constantly getting inspired by her as she takes me to these different workshops and 
exhibitions, and I thought I wanted to do something like that for hairdressers. So we have this class called Hand Cut. And hand Cut. cut. That's right. Like hand the word cut. hand and then cut. So it's yep. all about, you know, it's all about celebrating the artisan and you as a hairdresser. So we actually take the students the very first day to a place called Foci where they spend the entire day blowing glass. It's like a field trip. It's a field trip, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't imagine that blowing glass is like cutting hair, but it really is. It so really all the is. Craft show it, yeah, it completely yeah. connects. We've been watching Chef's Table. Have you watched that show? Love, love. So love inspiring. That. Yeah, yeah, very inspiring. And so it, it, it just allows people to reconnect at a level that they may have not thought of before. And, you know, a paradigm shift in someone's job can do huge things. It can really make you feel like you're not working anymore and that you oh, really yeah. are. It takes it from a job to a career to a lifestyle. I mean, are we working right now? We're not really? working. We're not done. Well, Ricardo might feel like he's working with this blow dryer. It's amazing. So, yes, it's a best brush. Lots of people asking about the brush. Um, that's a best brush. It's a very popular brush. You can actually get those at hairbrain.pro. There you go. Uh, we sell lots of them because we really believe that it's a top quality tool. And you'll notice lots of precision hair cutters like Ricardo, uh, myself, Julian Pro, Tristan Morris. There are lots of these people that are only using best brushes. Which they really help to just clean up the tool. So again, for those that are just joining Ricardo, talk a little bit about the blow dry technique. Today. Yeah. So it's a wrap dry technique and really it's about using the head as the molding surface. There's nothing that's really like forced or fixed in. You're kind of allowing the hair to sort of mold up against the head. And uh, you know, my big tip is to try to, you know, get all the hair combed out, but do try to start similar to the front side because it's just gonna make it easier as you start to travel back. And generally, this is the hair that tends to dry fast uh, and quite quick, so you want to get that really beautiful shape, as well as, you know, just from a psychological point. So right now, when you switch from wrapping and you're folding the hair over the yeah. brush, tell us a little bit about that. So the wrapping is really taking care of that root area, and the leafing is really covering anything from mid-ends uh, to the end there, so. Oh, we have a really important question coming in from Mr. Jay Mahmood. Oh, Jay, where are you tonight? He wants to know what kind of brush you use to blow dry your pretty hair. <laughs> Can you tell Flat us iron. Flat iron and diffuser. <laughs> I was thinking maybe you use the Brillo pen. Just Very funny, you are. Well, well, Jay's, Jay's seen my Jay, hair down, so. Jay, you're going to make it down. Maybe he's waiting outside. He's stalking yeah. us. Yeah. We'll see you later, Jay. We'll have some dinner together. Right on. Excellent. So, using the, the body of the blow dryer, yeah. kind of using the brush a little bit like a Totally. Way. I mean, you know, I don't think, you know, the Denman allows you to not create any beautiful shapes. In fact, it's the opposite. You know, sometimes we look at certain haircuts and we think they've just been so over blow dry, but, you know, Denman just kind of puts in a quite a modern, Easier, it's a philosophical choice, right? Yeah, if the shape is the style, lots of times the denim or the best brush really brings it out. Sometimes if the shape is just a base for lots of styles, which it can be, then you can use the round brush, the curling iron, you know, and you can do all those things here. Uh, but in this case, we're really just the haircut is the style. It's a philosophical choice. So a couple of people asking questions about wet cutting versus dry cutting. Well, do you have anything you want to share about that? You know, I, you know, a lot of people uh, have moved towards the dry cut. I mean, can you really just do with one? You know, I think you have to have both. I think you need to have, you know, both the wet cutting and the dry cutting. I think when people really like dry cutting, uh, it tends to be more because they just love texturizing. So, you know, I love texturizing too, but well, it's a great thing put about put it in shape first. The thing about hairdressing is there's so many ways to do yes. it as long as you're passionate about it and yeah. do it well. And really, all you have to do is find three, four hundred people that love what you do and they're willing to come and see you every six weeks and you'll have a great career. Right. So back to the best advice. The best advice is find what you love. If you do some dry cutting and you love it, 
put all of your heart and energy into it. But don't think one is right and one is wrong. I think that's when you limit yourself. Yeah, it's like, like an Absolutely. artist just deciding that there's only one type of paint they're now going to work on yeah. on a canvas. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots and lots of different yeah. ways to do it. I think that you know the best advice is if you really just don't know. And in, in an industry like today, I think it was much more predictable when we were going through school than when we were learning. And now it's so hard to predict. Like I never knew that Instagram and Facebook Live was going to be a way that we would be educated. I know. Like, I, I know. People. I know. Some people, people yeah. had the foresight. I know. Yeah. I know. So, uh, it's, it's really understanding how technology is going to change our industry. How you know online has changed education. You know, there's an interesting. Um, it's a simple philosophy. It says that if technology can replace kind of a middleman, it will. Yes. So in any way that there's a middleman in your business, technology can replace it, and that's what we're seeing here. And a lot of people thought, oh, I'm a hairdresser. Technology can never replace me, but it's changed in a certain way. Yeah. If you're a hairdresser, you can learn how to use any type of social media. You're probably having a much harder time. Absolutely. It's, you know, I think our, our jobs before was you know, learning how to cut color and style. Now it's like photography, and, you know, how to market yourself, and it's, it's, it really has changed. So, so Ricardo's shape is starting to dry and beautifully. You can see that. Again, we've got probably about hundreds of people that are just joining. Tell us where we are, what we're doing. Tell us a little bit about Earth Month and, and kind of why we're here. Okay, so. Um, you know, the whole reason why we're doing this is obviously there's a charity event that we're doing here, so we've taken off Stephanie's hair. I forget the charity that we've done. It's called Children with Hair Loss. It's an easy one, Children with Hair Loss. Children with Hair Loss. So we're donating. a really great cause. We're donating all Stephanie's hair to Children with Hair Loss. Check it out, great organization. It's also um, Earth Month. Yeah, we're kicking off Earth Month, aren't we? Yes. And so we've got our like candle way, we've got students here who've also bought tickets to raise money to help, you know, awareness around clean water. I mean, and Avetis, this is just, this is what we do daily. Yeah, it's kind of And Stephanie's cut all our hair off, and she looks awesome. Yeah, it's looking amazing. The shape's falling in beautifully. You can see how happy she is about that. Yep. Have you ever worn your hair this short? I've actually worn it shorter. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. mushroom type haircut. Yeah. So Not any, cute. Didn't have me cut it. <laughs> so how does it feel to have this big makeover? I'm just like so relieved because my hair was so heavy before. Yeah. So now it's super light. And I've actually never had some kind of like asymmetrical type of haircut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got that beautiful angle too. It makes a statement. Amazing. All right, so here's a question. We get this a lot when people blow dry with the best brush and no nozzle. So uh, Crystal Lee wants to know why you're not using a nozzle. We get this every time, so it's a really valid question. Can you explain? I mean, you can, you can totally use a nozzle. Um, I'm not doing it in this, at this place. This is going to give me a slightly nicer finish with the ends of her hair. Um, I feel like you can move the air around in more directions. Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes when you're working with a round brush, the air is very yeah. directional. Yeah. When you're working with a flat brush and you're moving so much, you have to move your arm around way too much if you have a nozzle. Although well, sometimes you can do it with a nozzle. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think everything that you do has to be a case-by-case -case scenario rather than uh, you know, this is what you do for the masses. So I think that's important to remember. Right, like Mussolino joined us. We're a little late to the party, Frank. But that's all we right. We had over 2,000 people watching us tonight. I was wondering, where is Frank? Where is Frank? But well, he's finally here. <laughs> Frank is a good friend of ours. He watches. You feel better now, All of our regulars were here. But when Frank is here, I really feel like we're doing the right thing. Yeah. And you guys, some people have noticed our buddies in the background shooting. We've got Ben over here. Michael hey, over ben. here. They came down from... Uh, from Pennsylvania to shoot. Of course, Michael. Which is awesome. So we'll have lots of photos of the whole event and the after. Okay, you it's gotta all right, get that Frank. now. All right. Frank says you're sorry. Let's cut some hair. We, we made it. Been. All right, so for everyone that's just joining, cut off a ton of hair, beautiful makeover. You can see all that hair that was cut off there. Look at that. It was down there. Put in a nice graduated shape with a bias cut line on the top. Blow dried using wrap drying with a vest brush now to the dry cutting and the refinement. Take it away, Ricardo. Yeah, so we're gonna go in first. 
you know, and obviously I'd love to have, you know, another three hours as I was explaining to go in and flat iron everything and make my line super perfect. But we're just gonna go through and this is much more realistic. Ricardo, are you spending any time in the salon these days? A few people were asking about if you're working in the salon or taking clients. Well, you know, my, my job has become um, one that has made that part a little bit more difficult. I still do have some people that I, I take care of. I'm, I'm not officially open, you know, for, for regular appointments. Are you getting this? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's become trickier. I love doing clients. I do want you to talk a little bit about the way you're holding the scissor there, because it's a subtle difference from perhaps the way that we were trained uh, a long time ago. Yeah. But I think it, it makes a big difference in how you cut the line. Can you show that? Yeah. Hold so that it's that? it's it's trying to extend, you know, the fingers, as opposed to allowing the hand and the knuckle to sort of assume control of the scissor. And uh, you know, it's a it's a light tool, so it's not something that. You know, I think you need to be holding uh, with such weight. So your thumb's barely in it's there. Barely it's in just there. kind of caressing the yeah, edge. Yeah, yeah, caressing is the right word. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. How you guys doing? You enjoying this? Yeah. yeah. I told them they have to be very, very <laughs> quiet. Yeah, so everyone out there can hear. But now you can make some noise. Is it good? You like it? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So it's a room full of cosmetology students here, and they're getting to see a master hair cutter at his best. All right, so coming into the second side, you got any tips at this point for cleaning up the line and strengthening the line? Do not go forward with the blades. You come back as you cut. Such a huge thing. Explain that. Well, well, the scissor's not meant for you to kind of go forward with it because the line is just going to literally move. Well, the blades will push the hair. Exactly. How it's the way they're sharp. Yeah, it's, it's literally like, you know, I've always used the analogy of trying to cut a tomato. And, you know, when they try to show you how sharp the scissor is or the knife is, it's really about coming in and literally pulling the blade back as you start to cut, as well as using your other finger to help to stabilize the scissor. You'll just find they'll get a much cleaner edge. And then the other thing is to kind of use the tips to come in and to sketch a line. And what the pointing will do is sometimes it helps to remove weight in between the sections of hair or in between. Um, you know, the individual strands, so it just takes some of the density away, and that will make it easier for you to go in and cut. It also helps to confuse the eye to make the line look a little straighter. That's kind of like a trick. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. It's, you know, do, do you kind of believe in the philosophy that the last 20% of a cut like this is like probably the most important? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This, is, this is where I actually will slow the process down. You know, the, the basic shape is one thing, but I think you know, bringing out the personality of the cut as well as your client, this is where it really happens, which is why I think people gravitate towards dry cutting so much. They love the idea of doing well, all the personalizing. Well, it's a lot of cause and effect. Yeah, you see it yeah. right away. Yeah. You but, know. you know, with you, your philosophy was to put in a strong shape first. Yeah. And then you feel like maybe you have a little bit less work to do at the end. It's just refining. Absolutely. Putting I, the icing on the yes. cake. Tell us a little bit about why you're elevating now and, and point cutting at this section of the hair. So this is where the, the, at the heaviest part of the cut is right now. And it is officially disconnected from the graduation. So you do get a little bit of overhang. And so by pointing into it, it helps just to sort of diffuse, I think, you know, the blending from the graduation into the layer and it's not going to be taking away any of the integrity. Is that what makes it a lob? I think it's a <laughs> lob because they've, they've officially combined the words long and bob. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I think they do that with anybody dating a celebrity now as well. Yeah. That, that tends to be the way to... Yeah, there was sort a question of, earlier. I'm sorry, I forgot who asked it, but it was... Um, you know, and I know, Ricardo, you work on seasonal collections, yeah. uh, what, twice a year with Aveda? Yeah. Kind of global mm -hmm. collections. Yeah. So can you give us any predictions of, like, what, um, what's coming? The, the question was, what's the it haircut? I know that you probably have some thoughts. You're probably planning. What, when is the next collection shoot, and, and what are you planning? Well, it's in a couple of weeks. I can't tell you exactly what we're Oh, just planning. tease us a little um, bit. Come on. Hey, look, I think, I think haircutting is coming back. Um, I think there's a lot of attitude more so than a specific look. Wait, great joke here from Matthew, Mr. Scribbles, our friend. He said a long bob should be called a Robert. <laughs> a long bob, a Robert. 
I think that's a great job. There we go. <laughs> Nobody laughed, but there we go. Me I and, got it. Me and Mr. Scribbles. All of us and, yeah. All right. So tell us again about about no, the direction. I, I just think that there's you know there's been you know so many girls cutting and shaving their heads, and I think that there is something more to do rather than oh this is going to be the new look. I think it's more about women rebelling. And I think, you know, when you see people like Kristen Stewart, there was another musician recently that just cut her hair. You know, they're a little late in the game in terms of what's been happening with fashion and like, you know, people like Ruth Bell shaving their head. Um, you know, you see entire Instagram pages dedicated I to people. I heard you were going to shave your head. There, there, there may be a harebrained yeah. live with me yeah. getting my hair cut. Can, can, can I please do it? Can I please do it? Yeah. I'd be I the would first. Really I'd be the first. You chose anyone else besides You'd be the me first. I'd have. You know yeah. the first. Time Actually, I need a haircut. Can we, we do a trade? We, we can switch. Yeah, so it's looking a little. We little can better. switch. Yeah. Awesome. So I think I think that is going to be uh, just a continued thing. Anything that's short that feels a little bit more aggressive, I think we'll continue to see lobs as being a go-to haircut for a lot of clients, just because it is such a, a go-to haircut. I think not only for fashion. Uh, but for clients just in general because it's like that uh, crossroads kind of haircut. It's, you know, one of those that if you gr regret it, you can easily grow it out. I think it's still easy to style. You can still tie it back so it really fits into your... Uh, Do you feel rebellious? A little bit. Yes, so again. <laughs> from long hair to short hair, that's pretty That's rebellious. where we started and that's where we are now. Before, after. And again, all this hair is being donated so it's for a good cause. To just, uh, just children a, with hair loss. Another tip, you know, when, when texturizing is um, to try to work more diagonally and more horizontal. Yeah, there was a question from Daniel Sexton about yeah. your sectioning, if you yeah. could explain your sectioning so, pattern. So, you know, you know, texturizing is, is, a, is a great thing to do with a haircut. It helps to marry all the ends of the hair together. But I sometimes think people do it in the wrong way. and. Not that it's wrong, but you know, sometimes you'll take a vertical section and what's happening is you're, you're basically sandwiching the hair in the wrong areas. And if you think about you know, the planes of the head and how to efficiently get weight out so that the, the function of the haircut works much easier is to really think about the head and how that hair tends to almost like the pages of the telephone book. And so as you're taking your sections, try to avoid going in vertically and canceling out what you've just essentially cut. So a few great comments coming in about the haircut thing. Jolene, who organized all this yes. for Veda, she said she heard the finale here is you getting the haircut. Uh, that's what, that's, that's we're going to try to plan out there. there. I'm going to cut his hair. We're going to donate it. What do you guys think? Should we just keep watching. Yes. Keep watching. Yes. Keep watching. And then Hope Harris. Okay. I'm sure you know Hope. I think she's yeah, a good professional. Awesome. She wants to know if there's a man bun in my future. <laughs> there Should is. we have a change? I'll do the man bun and you do the <laughs> men's basic layer. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I think Ricardo's kind of in his final yep. refinements here. Um, I want to thank Stephanie for allowing us to do this huge <laughs> makeover on her and so kind of her to donate this hair. We also want to thank Aveda for supplying the, the space here at the Aveda Institute in New York City, organizing it. The whole team here was so great in helping us move everything around and allowing the students to watch. And all the students that are here donated $5 each. Way to go, uh, guys. To be here. That money goes to um, Avena Earth Month for clean water. Again, if you want to support Earth Month, you can buy a Light the Way candle for $12 either online or at any Aveda network salon, and that $12 will be donated. It helps to raise millions of millions of dollars to help uh, clean water. I'll be up in Canada for Aveda Canada. Yes, during the next month, month. Uh, we're going to be doing a big fundraiser for clean water up there as well. So. Keep your eyes on that. I'm going to turn it over to Ricardo to do with his finishing touches here. So we're just finishing off. We just put a little dry shampoo. And it's really just to give the hair a little bit of grit because she's so super straight and her hair just <laughs> is not super that sweet. rebellious type of hair. But we wanted to just have a little bit more fun and just to touch my body. And then we just got some air control, which is like my go-to hair cutter's hairspray because it's really like pliable and moldable, so it's nice. Incredible shape, incredible work from the part of Thanks, guys. guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Stephanie. Shake your head. Let's see that beautiful hair. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Remember to support Earth Month. We love you guys. Peace out. <laughs>